Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. I am delighted to introduce Yosuka Dilla, who is a long term contributor to the Mortic community. His specialism is in large scale Mortic DevOps, and he loves working on anything to do with Mortic infrastructure, Mortic development, consulting, automation strategy, anything like that. And you can find him at moreteam.org. So over to you, Yossi. Hello, everyone. This is Yosuka Dilia. Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, first things, I want to apologize for using the default fonts, and I hope your eyes don't suffer too much during this presentation. Let's uh, get started with scale your Mavic into the millions. <laughs> or die trying. Uh, I will be sharing uh, with you what I know about how to make Mautic scale to have thousands of campaigns, millions of contacts. First things first, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for choosing this presentation. Uh, good morning to the Americans, good afternoon to the Europeans, and for the Asians and the Australians. I hope your coffee machine is brewing like crazy because we are, ju we are just uh, halfway and there's much more coming. So before we start, uh, I want to thank the uh, team that uh, the work group for this uh, event. They uh, have been working against the clock and they are really amazing. Thank you very much. So why, why are we all uh, here today? Uh, we are here because Mauric is uh, free. Mauric is free as in free beer, which means that you don't have to pay for the license. And also Mauric is free as in freedom. Uh, because you have access to the code, and if that is uh, not enough, you can you are allowed to extend it, uh, which uh, means that uh, you can. If Mautic is doing something great for you and you want to improve over it, you are allowed to do it. Uh, you can modify it, which means that if Mautic is doing something good but it's not uh, going exactly or doing it exactly the way you uh, want it to do, you can change that. And you can also package it or sell it, and that's awesome. Uh, but more importantly, you can chop it into pieces. <clears throat> so how many contacts can... Uh, so OK, so this, uh, this presentation is about uh, all jobs apart. It's about scaling Mautic as your business grows. And also, if you already have a big business and you are trying to decide if Mautic is a good choice for you, um, we, will dive, uh, we will dive into how you can do that uh, from the get-go. So how many contacts can uh, Mautic run in just one instance of Mautic? Uh, 10 million contacts. And how do I know? Because I've been asking around for a long time and no one seems to uh, have a bigger than that uh, instance and since uh, you manage one of uh, 10 million instance, Context instance, I know for a fact that 10 million is something it can do. Um, anyway, we are con constantly pushing the envelope in this direction. Uh, it gets uh, kind of hard over, it, uh, increasingly hard, but um, we will see different ways of doing that in this presentation. Also, if you happen to manage a 10 million or bigger instance of Mautic or you know of someone, please let me know. I will be very excited to share thoughts with whoever does that. So my name is Josu Kadila. I uh, work on large scale Mautic uh, deployments. Um, I also like to work on special case Mautic deployments, which means I will charge you even if uh, your database is small, but I will be happy to take your uh, specific case if it's a kind of a special or a very interesting uh, piece of uh, you know, deployment. So that's the most, the most things I do. If you happen to be a client of mine, I will also do multi consulting, uh, marketing strategy, training, whatever you need it. Uh, I will do, um, and of course you can find me on mauteam.org where I share the very basics of uh, how to run uh, Mautic cell hosted. So before we dive into the topic, j uh, let me just, um, start with a, with a quick note. The marketing automation industry has defined number of contacts as the main metric uh, for everything marketing automation, 
and that's what we use, number of contacts. This is very, a, good, very, a very good metric to selling the products, uh, the marketing automation products. Uh, every marketer, every CMO, every CEO will know, will understand perfectly what this is. Uh, however, uh, when we are talking um, large scale, Mauric, this is not a good metric. And I will have a very simple, a very stupid example, which, um, which is if you have um, 1 million contacts in your database and you have 10 campaigns in Mauric, you get 10 million processes. And if, you get, if you've got a 10 times smaller database, but you have 300 campaigns, you get three times the number of processes. This is a stupid example, but it's just to illustrate the point. So uh, instead of using number of contacts, I recommend you that uh, you use the size of the database in disk, which will give you a much better idea. Um, if you don't really yet know or have no idea of how to, uh, how much uh, space in disk your database will take, you have a blog post uh, on mauteam.org uh, slash infrastructure, you can find it, uh, which will try to help you um, measure or define uh, what your deployment uh, will look like in terms of RAM and CPUs. Okay, so the first thing is make sure you uh, you have plenty of RAM, and I mean this is pretty obvious, right? But I you wouldn't believe how many cases I find that somebody is running a million or 500k contacts in 16 gigs of RAM, and then Mautic is not working properly, or the database is getting sluggish, or the interface doesn't work. It just needed more RAM. Um, again, I will send you back to, to this post in, in my blog to, to, make, to have a better idea of what you should be using. Um, anyway, uh, uh, Mautic documentation defines um, a large Mautic installation uh, from anything beyond 100K contacts. So let's say a five up to 500K contacts is a large uh, deployment. And in order to be able to run that, you mostly will only need uh, basic tuning of all the services or uh, especially the database. And for the most part, if you have a, a professional setup in place, that's, going, that's probably going to be enough. When we start growing, you will then uh, for certain need fine-tuning all of your all of all your services that means Apache that means your database that means um, your caching uh, mysql whatnot everything you will find you will need to fine-tune and in some cases you might need professional help for that and now we're going to get into you know the real deal and that's where you go way beyond one million and in that case is when I certainly recommend you to start uh, thinking about hiring a professional DBA, um, an expert. Uh, then you will start finding concurrency uh, issues, which means that your uh, cron jobs, which are basically a Mautic command or a Symfony command made for Mautic, um, are going to be running in just one CPU. Um, it doesn't matter if you have uh, 10 contacts or 10 million contacts is all of the um, tasks that a cloud job is running is going to, are going to be running in one CPU. Uh, for example, your you know uh, your campaigns one CPU, um, your segments one CPU, etc. So what I uh, usually use are for two things for for campaigns. Uh, there's there's been a, it's been there for a while. You have the campaign ID and you have a way to run several threads of campaigns at the same time. Uh, this is called or based on the campaign ID and I suggest that you look at it. And for th uh, other things like for example segments that do not have this feature implemented yet in Mautic, uh, you can either implement it as, as a new uh, Mautic command or you can just script it as, cron as uh, uh, with Go or with uh, Bash, and then use that. Another thing that's pretty counterintuitive or that not many people use because the trend in the um, system administration world is separate your database, and for example, we have in Amazon Web Services, 
we have RDS and Aurora, which are ex excellent services. But those, that, this means that your database is living elsewhere and you have a network in between your Mautic and your database. Uh, so one very or relatively simple step is uh, move your database to your own server. It's going to be cheaper for you um, than RDS, for example, or Aurora. And also you will have full control of the settings. So if you are planning on either by yourself improving your, your uh, fine tuning your database or even better if you're hiring a DBA, uh, they won't be able to do everything that can be done on an RDS database. While in your own server, you can do anything that you need to do. And also, if you can use containers, you can move both Mautic and the database to the same server and not be worried of your database eating all the resources. So yeah, move as, as much as possible, move the database closer to Mautic. This on this size of um, uh, deployments helps a lot. Um, further that or in the end of that uh, spectrum, uh, you might want to consider separating it back and using multiple servers. But anyway, um, with 24 terabytes of RAM uh, being the maximum size available right now on Amazon Web Services and EC2, I don't think there's a reason not to, have to keep everything uh, together. And finally, consider using queues um, to speed up things or to take away some load from, from Maui. And now we're getting into real trouble, right? So if you um, are running a really, really, really large um, Mautic deployment, you will find that you have a serious bottleneck on, especially if you run it in some, in some uh, cloud provider, of course, um, with IOPS and with the communications over the network and with your database living in drives that are shared and things like that. So in some cases, not for, the, not for every single case, but in most cases, in some cases, uh, it, having some control over the hardware can help you a lot. Um, either speeding up or even making ma your deployment much cheaper on you know, Amazon uh, fees. And by much cheaper, I mean half of the cost um, if you have to buy dedicated IOPS, for example. Sometimes you will find yourself buying bigger, much bigger disks than what you need just because then you get more, more IOPS and if, you, if that doesn't work, you can buy the IOPS directly, but this is really, really expensive. And really, you are not buying anything that you can get for free, um, lots of it for free in, in, in bare metal or, or dedicated. If you do go that road, uh, try to design your hardware for DB performance. This means, um, the faster IOPS that you can get, uh, and NMVA drives, and if you have several servers, uh, because you cannot get 24 terabytes of RAM in dedicated servers, as far as I know, um, so maybe you need several servers, try to use dedicated switches. Um, most mm, good uh, dedicated hardware companies, uh, data centers will offer you this possibility. You can have a dedicated switch to connect your servers uh, in an internal network and there is nothing faster than that if you need to run several servers. Next thing you can consider is breaking down some parts of Mautic and that means substituting Mautic parts that are maybe slow or even if the parts in Mautic are not slow you can have find faster par uh, parts or you know software out there and I recommend you to look at things like Kafka, Matomo and Snowplow or for email delivery, you can use an SMTP server uh, in the middle of your ses, uh, sorry, um, email, email provider and your Mautic to speed up things, um, and even better than MTA software. So like I said, we will now dive a little bit later, we will be diving into uh, DBA architecture. So when you start thinking all together, it will work well and, uh, for this range of, let's say, two to five millions, maybe even seven, something like that, depending on what you're doing with Mavic. It's not the same if you are just sending emails that if you are building real experience campaigns that have everything in it and use a lot of features, uh, Mautic features. So um, 
yeah, and then just like uh, for for 1.5 to 5 million, I said just uh, get a professional DBA. Well, now you need to get a professional expert uh, to tune every single of your services um, in order to be running that that kind of uh, instance. And I'm not going to go because you you have you see that it, uh, the a number of things that you need to do grow and for massive I'm going to just move on to several slides. Uh, this is uh, everything from here on is uh, kind of experimental. Um, we are re we are running some of those things in production, just a few of them. Uh, it's it's not uh, it's not smooth. It's not smooth. It's, we have some hiccups. So. Um, putting so wrapping up everything that I said until now, most of the time uh, your problems, no matter the size, it doesn't matter 500k or 5 million, your problems will mostly all the time be around the database, the cron jobs, and the email. Um, the database and the crons is a performance problem. The email is not usually going to interfere or prevent you from having a smooth running Mautic. Uh, however, it's a, a very problematic um, issue or topic. So for the database, as I said, keep your database um, as close as Mautic as you can. You now have up to 24 terabytes. The, uh, this, is, this is very special, very expensive um, um, bare metal instances, but uh, without going to extremes, you have 192, 256, um, gigabytes of RAM in relatively standard instances in EC2. Same goes for Google Cloud. And on dedicated hardware, it's not difficult to, to get to even one terabyte. So 256, uh, 512 megabytes is pretty usual. And you can get to one or even two terabytes of RAM. So there's no excuse, no, no excuse to keep your database close to Mautic if you use containers, otherwise the, your database might eat all the resources on your server. So what else? Um, you clean up your database regularly. That means um, that you, there are a lot of things or a lot of data in Mautic that gets stored and it's very useful, but usually it's very useful for some time. And that's not something that usually you decide as you know the system administrator or your or the DevOps. It's something that you have to discuss with your marketing team, uh, maybe uh, with your um, chief marketing officer, executive, whatever. What is the data that you really need uh, for your daily operations? And whatever you don't need, uh, define the scope or the time window and make sure that everything that's not in the time window they require, you just remove it. Another alternative is um, to just move or copy all this data that's not needed for, let's say, uh, immediate uh, action on campaigns and move it to a, a copy it and re uh, to another table or database and remove it from Mautic. I've seen a 400K instance uh, having a 340 gigabytes database running everything on 32 gigs of RAM. This is crazy. And after the cleanup, it went down to eight gigabytes of database in the, in the disk. So it's very important. Most of, many of the cases that I find that are just mm, blocked Mautics, Mautics that don't work or are very, very slow or they are losing data, they don't know why. Uh, it's just because they don't have the, the proper uh, amount of RAM for the, for the size in disk and because the size in disk has grown overly too, too, uh, too big uh, for what's needed. So cleaning your database is very important. And you can define rules to automate that. Once you know the, the time frame, you can define rules so you can automate this, this process of cleaning and even moving the, the data maybe overnight to another uh, database. So you keep it, but you don't uh, have it in, in, in Mautic. You can then read it from uh, with other analytic tools. Uh, optimizing database is also very, very important. Uh, proper indices, schema, and most of it, the data types are in Mautic are okay, but are not thought 
for high performance or high loads. So uh, fine tuning the data types is going to help you a lot in, in getting your mouse stick running smooth without breaking the bank. So then, um, yeah, learn deep, as deep as you can, dedicate as much time as you can at uh, learning about database um, maintenance and operation and, and how to optimize that. And if, if you find, a, find it a topic that's boring or even uh, after you learn and apply some things, it doesn't get to the point where you like, just hire someone that's really an expert on, on, on databases. And just in a few minutes, we'll get to vertical and horizontal partitioning, multi-master, and other things related to databases, again, in the experimental zone. Uh, for your cron jobs, uh, start using campaign ID. This is, this is a, um, a way to split your whole list of campaigns into several blocks and then run those in parallel. Uh, build your own scripts. You can you can use, um, of course, you can use C++ or you can use um, Go. You can use anything you want. I use Bash most of the time. So uh, the goal would be running one segment or campaign every time. So you have, I don't know, 200 campaigns. Even if you use the campaign ID, and that's this that that works uh, much better even for 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 um, segments which don't have you know, the segment ID capability to, to separate them. The idea is to run one campaign at a time, not a block of 10, not a block of 200, just one campaign at a time. And that is because Maudic has um, to block, to put blocks in the database in order to run operations. So, uh, so nobody overwrites or tries to read or mostly tries to write something that's already being write, written to. Um, so it needs to block those things. When you start putting thousands of operations at the same time, those blocks will prevent other things to, from happening until this other thing has happened before. So when you are running hundreds of campaigns, thousands of segments, whatever it is, uh, this can start blocking each other and then some things even never happen uh, because the blockings are preventing the other jobs from, from running. So if you run one campaign or one segment each time, and then another one, and then another one, and then another one, you get two things. One, you never hit those blocks. Uh, I've seen terribly, terribly clogged uh, Mautics run just smoothly with much finer control over the speed and uh, how you spread over time those uh, campaigns or, or segments executions. Uh, alternatively, you can try to look at Anacron, Fcron, Hcron, some other cron uh, engines that are also uh, available for, for Linux. So for the, uh, for the email, usually I recommend not using the, um, the queue. And I say, I know that Mautic uh, documentation says um, that if you have a lot of email to send, just switch on the, the multi queue. And, but this is both good and also problematic. So uh, if you can use the API, I recommend SendGrid. We just have uh, recently had a Mailgun uh, also API um, integration. And the SES integration has, it has been around for a lot of time. I know people that's using it uh, in production, no problem. Uh, I think the existing one, the, the publicly available one, needs a little bit of tweaking, but it's uh, much better than have a lot of problems with your email because you are using SMTP. Uh, so if you cannot use the API, then uh, you switch Mautic to the queue, but you don't use the queue, uh, you don't spool Mautic, you don't let Mautic send your emails. So uh, okay, um, what you can do is uh, scrape your own, uh, spool, um, script your own spooling, that will be much faster if you do it properly and there are some things that are avail uh, pre-built available scripts that can help you um, decide how to run your own or, or how to build your own. And you can also use uh, SMTP, a local SMTP server to send the email from Mautic to the SMTP server which will be much faster or even better an MTA that's specific only for sending. 
Okay, uh, we are doing scarce on the time, so I'm going to go fast and move to the advanced or experimental things. So let's start hacking. Oh, hacking. Oh, hacking is not a good word. Let me just fix that slide. Okay, let's start innovating much better. So the thing is that what I'm going to present with you know, it's just like kind of um, cheating. So it's uh, not going to be doing the things the way they are supposed to be, but you know, if it works, um, let's start with uh, what is the traditional method. Everything that I've been talking until, uh, about until now would be sticking to one multi code base and one database, whether it is uh, one single database or um, master slave configuration, something like that. And now it's when, when we're going to start chopping Mautic into different pieces, or at least uh, chopping your database. So we have two options. One is breaking the database into several chunks, and one is breaking Mautic into several chunks. So the, f the first option would, would have um, different ways of, the, of uh, chopping down your, your database, which means that if you have, let's say, five millions, you can make, uh, which is kind of hard to manage, and far, um, you can have five one million databases, which are very much uh, simpler to manage than just one large uh, instance. And then when we go to the breaking Mautic, uh, this part is harder and I have less experience with it. But basically, um, well, well, we'll dive a little bit uh, more into it later. So if, um, if you have a lot of uh, reads, you have a read intensive Mautic, uh, that would be most Mautics. You can have a master and several slaves. And this will help you a lot because usually the rights to the database are not going to be that many. Uh, if you have a very, very, very high traffic website that you are tracking with Mautic, then you might want to go to something like several masters and maybe a, a slave, or you can directly use multi-master um, if you have several um, Mautics. So you, we have basically two ways of partitioning a a database, one would be vertical, the other one would be horizontal. And I want to thank Ruben Tejero, which in, on my last similar to this one presentation, shared uh, what he was doing uh, for running large databases. And he runs uh, five million uh, Mautic um, overall. And the solution that he opted to choose is uh, running five Mautics in parallel. I don't know the very specifics. I hope that I can uh, discuss that with him uh, soon. But basically, we have two ways of partitioning Mautic. Um, oh, sorry, databases. So the vertical partitioning would be something is you have a, the Twitter database. You have uh, the uh, users that could be on one database. You have the uh, tweets that could go in another database. And you would have the followers that could go in, an, in another database. And basically, when you have to build your website, your page, you would pull each piece of information from each one of the databases. Uh, uh, what I think Ruben uh, is doing uh, is horizontal partitioning, which means you take IDs one to one million, and you put it in one database, uh, uh, one million, one to two millions, and so on, and then you kind of partition that. Uh, for Mautic, I think, uh, the ID is a very good uh, way of doing it, as the most obvious probably, but you could also doing, uh, be doing it by time or use some more advanced uh, hashing algorithms. But I find it very interesting, the possibility of using location, uh, especially for larger companies that have a larger presence. So for example, if you are a US-based company and you only operate in the US, you could have your East Coast and your West Coast, and probably it's, it wouldn't be a big deal to have those two Mautics separated, and later we will see uh, how we can merge them together. This, uh, for the vertical partitioning, I think for Mautic it makes most sense to separate the page hits, uh, and that is because the page hits is mostly the, the bigger or larger, very, very write-intensive part of Mautic, 
So it would make sense. And also from the Mautic interface and Mautic um, functions of perspective, uh, page hits is not embedded in as many functions as other things. Uh, so I think the separating those would be a very a relatively simple and very smart way to, to do so. So if we take those, uh, so the one of the problems with those uh, kinds of deployments um, that use partitioning is that usually you say goodbye to things like joins, uh, complex queries. You have a very hard problem when you have to insert data or read data from something that you don't know what it is. So yes, this looks very simple and very smart. It is not that simple and it is just as smart as it lets you be. So um, another possibility is uh, what I call cascading. And that would be having one Mautic just for anonymous uh, users and another Mautic for registered users and just, uh, just an example. So another Mautic for engaged users which means that usually uh, you want, you are not going, your campaigns do not include anonymous contacts in general. There's, there's no a lot of functionality to do so. So if you keep your anonymous uh, users in one database, it's not going to impact the way you build campaigns. It's not going to have a, a great impact in your reports. So it's relatively easy. And then when uh, you have, you can have a campaign where you can, process all your contacts in your database and check which ones are registered. And as soon as you find some user that's registered, uh, you will uh, send it uh, to the next Mautic. That could be via an integration that you can use, for example, in a campaign too, but uh, alternatively, you can have a, the, your query run outside Mautic, which is maybe faster and it's easier to move all the required data, which is not just the, the, the uh, contacts table. It's many, many, lots of information that's everywhere. So it's probably much easier to make the right scripts outside of Mautic and then uh, use them to move um, the contact or the anonymous contact to the register database as soon as they register because there's a flag somewhere uh, that tells you to do so. And th th because we are getting a little bit short on time, the engage would work exactly the same. Uh, and, and getting that, and that's what we are exploring now, uh, making that scale uh, for large companies would be even easier, if, if anything. Because you could have, a, you know, US East, US West, another server for Europe, another server for Asia. And then um, those all would be anonymous, and then you would move them so usually you would get uh, much more traffic on the anonymous side, a little, uh, a much, much less uh, number of contacts on the registered side, but those contacts have heavier workloads. And then you could have one place to merge all the engage or special or whatever number of points or something like that. So you can, at any point in time, you can kind of have a comprehensive view uh, statistically, and you can work with the same type of uh, customer or, or customer levels in one place or in a fraction of the place. That kind of makes sense. Okay, fake microservices. I'm going to steal a little bit of time from the questions, but based, very quick, this is, so we, Mautic is monolithic uh, um, architecture. It was designed like that, and now we have a much modern microservices architecture, but Mautic is not designed for that. Um, maybe it will be soon because we are thinking on rewriting it, so perfect. But basically the idea is uh, because Mautic is uh, writing in Symfony and Symfony is very much a um, API first kind of um, uh, development framework. Uh, we can use that to our advantage and run, let's say, several uh, copies of Mautic, but instead of using the full uh, instance of Mautic, we just use some parts of it. That would allow, you, uh, allow us to divide the whole Mautic functionalities uh, into different uh, servers and then connect them uh, when required. Or have, and then is this event sourcing part, which means that uh, we can signal flag events using even even sourcing is just um, 
a way to develop software or mostly a way to develop software based on message queues. But uh, because we already have a, that one or more databases for Mautic, we can just put those events or signaling these events in the database, and then we can have pieces of software in the middle that, that will be waiting for those events to happen and then starting a new process on another Mautic that, and we just used a chunk of each Mautic for each one of those processes, and that would, would allow us to, to start thinking microservices even if though Mautic is not ready yet for that. So, okay, uh, five minutes too late, but I think it's okay. Thank you very much for uh, staying with me until now. And it, if you are interested in the specific uh, technologies or the stack that I used when building those kind of systems, because this presentation is already quite long, uh, I have another presentation about building your own Optics SaaS that uh, will dive a little bit more into the specific technology, so I invite you um, to join me there in four hours. Thank you very much. If there are any questions. Thanks, Yoshi. That was a really great talk. I really appreciated oh, that. And some really interesting insights into how you've um, approached some of the challenges along the way. So here are a couple of questions that have come in here. So is it worth provisioning IOPS in RDS? How much RAM do I need provisioning for this scale of water? with 1 million contacts, okay. 100 gigabytes yeah. of database. Yeah, so thank you. So here's the thing with IOPS. So you get a number of IOPS depending on the size of the disk that you buy. So if, um, and the IOPS will, will increment to a certain point. I don't remember the point, but I think uh, one terabyte you get uh, the maximum IOPS, like kind of for free. You're still paying for the disk, of course. But because we are never going to need that much, and, and 100 gigabytes is plenty enough for most Mautic databases, the uh, idea here would be that you can buy those IOPS, just the IOPS. And I did it, it works, it's very, very expensive. You don't think how expensive, mm -hmm. as expensive it can get. I don't pay for it, but then a month later, <laughs> My my boss calls me. Why are we paying three times more than the than the month before? And I was hmm, I don't know. Let me check what could have happened here. So um, it, I don't think it's worth it. So okay. And that's my, a, a little bit of apology of you know open source and the old style of doing things. And I've been a cloud promoter and defender. And even the cloud was something. But at the same time, I learned that cloud comes with a very, very high premium attached. And yeah. you don't, now, you think, now you think cloud is the most um, secure and fantastic thing in the world. But when cloud first came up, was born, everyone was saying, this is crazy. It's going to drive everyone nuts in the business because it's, how can this be secure? So it's, uh, you have to deal with the, Marketing part and with the reality part, both are in general have the value, but uh, usually there's nothing ever that you cannot do in your local machine, and by local I mean your, your dedicated server on a data center, uh, that you cannot, uh, there's nothing you can't do there that you can do on Amazon Web Services, except uh, the, the services themselves, which you can also reproduce. So, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, root 55, it's just a DNS server. Get, bring your up, okay. Bring one up, okay. The thing is that if you are a developer, it's much easier to say, start DNS or or bring this new domain up that that building your own DNS. But for people like myself, it doesn't make any sense. So that's why I'm defending this uh, point of view where you go more towards dedicated servers or bare metal. And you don't depend, yeah. also it's crazy, if you, if you start working with anything uh, cloud related, especially Amazon Web Services, then you are going to be tied to them forever. If you don't use those services, you can move your stuff to any other cloud. You can move anything you have in Amazon to Google Cloud or to Dedicated or to DigitalOcean or whatever. That's it. Yeah, and I guess it can get out of hand quite quickly, the prices, like you were saying, you know, one month the bill comes and there's quite a lot more. <laughs> yes. Great. 
Okay, so we've got another question here from Peter. How would you handle web event traffic uh, tracking in the split Mautic scenario? The tracking would go to the anonymous Mautic, but the user could have moved to the registered Mautic. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, I didn't have enough time for for going deeper into that, but the thing is, um, the anonymous users would be tracked in the anonymous Mautic, and the registered users would be tracked in the registered Mautic. What the difficult part is to move all the data, not only the not only the contact uh, fields from one uh, Mautic to the next, but all the data, including the tracking that's related to that user. That's kind of a complex query, and that's why I don't think it's it's a good idea to build it into Mautic. And I think it's better to script it independently because then it's much faster. You can run it at whatever time. You can work with that piece of software and make it do exactly what you do the moment you want to do it. Okay, great. And how do you deal with the limitation of the number of custom fields in Mautic? Oh, good question. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. This is, this is, uh, you might have seen a line somewhere in, in the presentation that said, uh, on the bottom of one slide that said, um, um, external tables with external processors or something like that. I don't remember. So the thing is, you have a, um, Heath Dutton contributed a long time ago, a uh, plugin to enhance the Mautic capability to have more, um, to have a custom fields. So you can just use that. The problem is uh, you can just install this and it doesn't, it, it doesn't just allow you to have more records or more custom uh, fields, but it also will improve a little bit the inner, inner workings of the Mautic uh, fields. So it's very good to mm -hmm. have. However, I don't think, or maybe he did, but I don't think he intended this uh, for adding 800 custom <laughs> fields. And that's what people are doing. So yeah. and I will talk about it. Yeah, I will talk about it later uh, today in, in four hours. <laughs> Or three. Uh -huh. um, the idea is that if you are, if you really need 800 uh, fields, please try to move those fields to a separate database, a, se a separate table at least, and then try to process that information uh, externally and give Mautic only the things that re are really needed to build those campaigns. And everything else is not necessary and you can imagine if you have 64 fields and 10 million users Mautic is already going nuts if mm. imagine that with 10 times 600 fields or yeah. 400 fields or whatever it's not a good idea it's better no at least how Mautic works right now is better to have this separated process it in some other way that makes sense for for the business logic and then send the, the right signals to Mautic just the right things that they need to send emails to process campaigns to show pop-ups, whatever it's really needed for Mautic. So you need to sit with your uh, CMO and with your marketers and discuss what's really needed and what's just st stuff that you need to have, but you don't really need in the core of your Mautic database. Yeah, some great points. That was going to be one of my questions actually, is like, what is the pinch point? And I feel like custom fields is one of the big problems that people have when they start to scale Mautic. Not only, I mean, you've talked about like when you get lots of uh, contacts, but also when you get lots of events. But the next one is as soon as you start integrating or importing data, your custom fields suddenly, you know, go through the roof and that wow. causes big problems. So, yeah. And everything, yeah, everything is super important. I mean, the 400 yeah. things are super important. <laughs> Uh, I mean, be realistic, yeah. you, uh, unless you have a, an eternal budget and you can hide, what, buy wonders of 24 terabytes RAM servers, and even then I doubt it would work just smooth. Uh, try to make sure that you know what's very, very much needed to run your campaigns and the rest, put it elsewhere, process it otherwise, and send signals to my ticks, like send an email or, or run this campaign or something like that. Yeah. That's great. Really, thank you for doing that talk and for the answers to the questions afterwards. I think that's been really enlightening for people and really interesting to hear how you do things, because I think sometimes people address these challenges in different ways. So sharing how you approach them allows us all to think, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of doing it that way. You know, so. 
yeah, yeah and I, I, regarding that so i i'm going to just uh, plug uh, plug this into the next presentation but now that you mention it and we have one minute for that i guess um <laughs> the the health data and the dms group are, are running a 500 million multi deployment 500 Gosh. million contacts that's mm -hmm. that's <laughs> That's half a billion, right? And yeah. they do it completely differently than the one I do. So I recommend if you're interested in those kind of things, check the DMS group uh, GitHub repository. They, mm -hmm. It's a little bit, uh, they share there a lot of things, including this uh, way of uh, adding more custom fields and also mm -hmm. how they load balance different, uh, how they build, uh, automate building and operating uh, large multi uh, setups. Um, in this case, mm -hmm. they don't run one large 500 million set uh, unique multi. They run thousands of multi for for different for thousands mm -hmm. of clients. But uh, the the good thing is that they present a totally com totally kind of opposite mm -hmm. way of doing things, and it also works. So yeah. the possibilities are endless, and this is w just the way I do it. And there are many other ways. And every day I hear, like, for example, uh, the one that uh, the, the cascading thing is something that I just uh, uh, kind of this. I had the basics in my head, but I didn't put it together until someone else told me, oh, I'm doing this. And I said, OK, this is very good. And I started thinking about it. Great. Awesome. That's what these events are all about, sparking those little insights of like, oh, wow, I can take that away. Fantastic. Yep. All right, thanks. Will you be in the networking area for a bit afterwards? Because you've got a little break sure. between your sessions, haven't you? Cool. Okay. So if people want to connect with you, they'll be able to do that then. Yes. All sir. right. Fantastic. Thank you very okay. much for your time, Yasmin. We'll see you again later. Thanks to you okay, for making this possible. Bye-bye.